Right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first ordinary meeting. Uh, I'd like to declare the meeting open. Um, we have no apologies or no leave of absence. Everybody's here, all looking good, very good. Okay, could I have someone move to confirm the minutes of the ordinary meeting of the 6th of March, please? Councillor O'Neill. I'll move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 6th of March 2024 be confirmed. Somebody second that? Councillor Hancock, all those in favour? Carried 9-0. Uh, okay, we also have minutes from yesterday. Anyone like to move the minutes of the post-election meeting held on the 9th? Uh, Councillor Brumpton. I move that the minutes of the post-election meeting held on the 9th of April 2024 be confirmed. Somebody second that? Councillor Davis. All those in favour? 9-0. Thank you. Uh, we move on to agenda item 8.1. Organized. I'd like to um, declare a conflict. Oh, sorry. Yeah. When you're ready. Yeah. Um, the item number is 8.1. The description is organisational review. I am the declaring councillor. Um, the person of interest and related party is my husband, Wayne Davis. The particulars of the interest is my husband is employed by Maranau Regional Council. It is a declarable conflict of interest. And although I have a declarable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person could have a perception of bias, therefore I will choose to remain in the meeting. However, I will respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Council. I have a conflict also. I okay. I only got two. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. I'll move uh, that uh, it is in the public interest. Oh, we are on the front of the yeah, yeah, that it is in the public interest of council that Davis participates and votes on agenda item 8.1 because a reasonable person would trust that the decision is made in the public interest. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Vincent, all those in favour? Can I just ask a quick, Councillor Berker, you were indicating that you oh, also I'll had a conflict on this matter. Too. I've got a conflict on yeah. this matter. Yeah, okay, so I've got three right. with a conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all those in favour? Six zero. Um, Councillor Burkett. Uh, I have a conflict of interest on 8.1, description organisational review, declaring councils myself. Person of interest is my sister, oh, my, I must not change that, sorry, it's myself. Uh, particular interest is my sister Elena Earl and she is an employee of the Maranau Regional Council. It's a declarable conflict of interest and although I have a declarable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person could have a perception of bias, therefore I'll choose to remain in the meeting. However, I'll respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. I have a move. Councillor Seawright. I declare that this is a that in the public interest that the Councillor Burkett participates and votes on the agenda item 8.1 because a reasonable person would trust that the decision is made in the public interest. I have a seconder. Councillor O'Neill, all those in favour? 6 0. Uh, Councillor Brompton. Brompton. Um, I need to declare a conflict of interest with relation to item 8.1, organisational review. The declaring councillor is myself. The person with the interest is my daughter, Erin Brumpton. My daughter is an employee of council. The type of conflict, declarable conflict of interest. Although I have a declarable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person could have a perception of bias. Therefore, I will choose to remain in the meeting. However, I will respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Have a mover, Councillor Hancock. I move that it's in the public interest that Councillor Brumpton participates and votes on agenda item 8.1 because a reasonable person would trust that the decision is made in the public interest. Seconder. Second. Councillor Vincent, all those in favour? 6 0. Okay, back to agenda item 8.1, organisation review. Do I have a mover? Just got a question first through the <laughs> chair to the CEO. The advice that's been provided this morning electronically and then handed out to us, is, is that in relation to any particular item? Um, the, it is germane to potentially this item. Um, it is advice obtained by me as the CEO prior to the formation of the new council around change management. 
and uh, some of the changes in legislation in relation to that. It, um, it doesn't affect... It's not going to affect your decision one way or another, but it is advice. What does germane mean? Relevant. Right. Relevant to the subject matter. To the subject matter, but not the decision. Yes, because I c couldn't preempt any decision. No, no, no. But to the, the to the subject matter of the report, but to the does the um, advice have an impact on the resolution that's before us? Uh, no other than s to support essentially a planning process. Okay, I'm happy to move. Thank you. I'll move the council one develop the scope for an internal review of the organisational structure through a councillor workshop and to consider a further report on upcoming council meetings. Do I have a seconder? Uh, a word there to Kel. Review, I change to structure. No, no, the next review. Uh, seconder, Councillor Hancock. Uh, would the mover like to speak? Uh, uh, very briefly, um, the uh, report that um, has been tabled by the Mayor uh, indicates that it, it's prudent after two years of the structure being in place that um, uh, Council should look at it. Uh, I don't, um, yeah. Anybody want to speak against? I'm going to just speak for as well. Um, yeah, the reason I brought it to the table is because, um, as you said, it's been two years since uh, the organisational structure has been in and we've never looked at it. So, and the reason we, I would like to have a briefing on it is so that you can all have input on what you'd like to see come out of the <coughs> review. So, um, and it's not going to be a, um, a one briefing, it's probably going to be several briefings. So, um, that way we're all on the table with what, what the organisational structure looks like today and your input on what you would maybe like to change for it to be for tomorrow. So, that's the only reason I'd just like to have a briefing so we can have an informal discussion, get staff in to give us the overview and we can go from there. So, anybody else like to speak? Councillor uh, Becker? Yes, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I, I too support this, but I hope that we can all go in with an open mind because yeah, I know there's a lot being said over the, uh, the course of the election and I just hope that we do go in with an open mind because and see the pros and cons, but there is a lot of pros that we've got to take in consideration and we're dealing with people's... Councillor Burke, are you speaking for or against the motion? For. 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 Yeah, um, I heard him. Yeah, just, that, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, that are in these positions that are probably thinking, you know, and I, I do appreciate that we're going to take a time to do this, so I do applaud that. Um, but, yeah, I just... Hopefully we just go on with an open mind. So I'm yeah. fully supportive of this. Uh, and look, and just through the chair, just for completeness, is... The, any review process is actually conducted by the organisation, not by the council. What, you, um, what you're having is a strategy conversation around how council would enact its, you know, what you want for your strategy and your structure follows strategy. So the structure is provided by the organisation to the council to say if this is what council want to see in relation to their strategic approach to council, op council operations or, or their corporate plan, this is the structure that would suit that. And there's, there's obviously... A partnership in relation to that. Happy with that. That's fine. All right, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Carried, 9-0. 10.1, innovations and effectiveness of local area directors. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hancock. I move that Council receive and note the report as presented. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Davis. Uh, would you like to speak, Councillor? Madam Hancock. Mayor, can I ask you a question with regard to this? Um, probably four councillors sitting here, five councillors sitting here, have no idea what this report is about. Mm. Could somebody explain it to us? Yep. So through the chair, um, this report is actually to help you understand in the last four years when we use the term operating locally, what we meant and what was what was the reason for that for um, the change to the organisational structure, which took some 18 months at the time. So hence what this report seeks to do is actually give you an overview of why the changes were implemented and the kind of initiatives and efficiencies that had been gained over that time. So it's really designed to assist the new councillors to have an understanding of how the council's been operating in the last four years. Just going back a few years, 
does this report take the take place of what were our old director of finance and th those reports that we received at each council meeting? Um, no, through the chair, the operating local model um, was a devolved model where you had place-based senior management as well as your traditional corporate structure. And so, um, and that was to overcome a range of issues uh, that the council had, um, was trying to address in relation to complaints around um, your the efficiency of the council, the competitive local business, supporting local business and responsiveness and improvement of services. Probably similar conversations that this council will have when it discusses so its strategy. further question, how do we as councillors address matters that might be addressed in this, these, this report? Um, Look through the chair. I think the only thing that councillors can do is ask questions. If there's something that you don't understand or uh, more than happy from an organisational perspective to answer those questions. And um, there, there's nothing stopping council having a further briefing on the way the organisation has been running over the last four years or any other detail that you might wish. Councillor Flynn, this is, this is not a normal report. We've never received a report like this ever before. It's, it's, it's just the first time today. Um, look, through the chair, the, C the agenda is on behalf of the CEO. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. And it's for decisions that the organisation needs to go forward. It's an information report. Councillor Flynn was asking, is this um, taking place of other reports that he was aware was in practice in previous terms? This isn't a report that comes on a monthly basis. This is the first time we've seen a report of this nature from the CEO. Mm. Other than the monthly briefings, yeah. Well, I'm happy yeah, to sure. receive the report. I'm just trying to Get work some out where it actually fits into the our role as councillors. The reporting of it, yeah. Mm. It's, uh, Sorry. Mm. Uh, look, just through the chair, quite simply, you are new councillors. 50% of the council is new. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation during the campaign around uh, how the council runs and doesn't run. This is just really bringing you up to speed in relation to the strategy that had been adopted by the previous council and giving you a first look at that. Um, you, you can do a further deep dive if you wish. Can I just make a comment? We're on day two after the campaign. I'm not totally sure that we should be going back and looking at what happened in the campaign. I think we as a council have to go forward That's now. right. Oh, that's right. And this is assisting you with information. And as far as having the organisational structure review, um, this will come into that as well, Councillor. So, sorry, Councillor Hancock. I just wanted to comment the same. Um, the reason I just received and noted the report is presented is because I actually believed that we would have a far bigger talk about everything that's in this report, yep. Yep. Um, all in a briefing when we're having a look at the organisation structure, um, because I think that it deserves more than just a, a report in this council meeting. I think new councillors and old yep. need a review, I need a briefing on this matter to fully understand where we are. Councillor Burkett? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'm happy to support this and I, I do agree that it'll be hashed over a lot more when we have a review, but I just want to applaud the, the directors for what they've done thus far. Uh, we can't overshadow, overlook that. Uh, they've done a hell of a job and it's, it, it took a long time to get in place, but I think the guys that are in, in place doing the job have done a really good, uh, at the, to this stage, hopefully things mm -hmm. will keep improving. Would anyone I, else like to speak? I, there was no criticism of the report whatsoever. My concern was there was five people sitting in this room, new people, who I doubt have any idea what the report is about. Yeah. And, and we can go through this report in a briefing as well. If, like, all, I, I just assume all of these things will be addressed with, more, as I said, more than one briefing and it'll all be part of the organisational structure review, which is the reason I wanted one. So everybody can get up to date with today and then move forward on what we're going to do tomorrow. So would anyone else like to speak? Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thanks, uh, through the chair. Um, just given what Councillor Flint said, I mean, you, you could if you move a procedural motion lay it on the table to come by a briefing. If, yeah, it's the point that was made by the Mayor yesterday. If you're not comfortable in voting for something, don't vote for it if you haven't got enough. But there are ways to 
make you get that more information for your vote, I hope. Yeah. Yep. It's so really I'm cheesy. happy for the motion to Are go. Are you yeah. Yeah. Sure. comfortable? Right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Ten point two submission of the Senex ARCP project twenty twenty four. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hancock. I move that Council A make a submission of support to the Senex Atlas Reedy Creek Pipeline ARCP project currently on exhibition by the deadline tenth of April twenty twenty four. Why is there an A in it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, someone second that. Councillor Seawright. Does anybody want to? Uh, sorry, Councillor Hancock, would you like to speak? Uh, no, thanks. Would anyone like to speak? For or against? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. 11.1 Elected members PAYG slash eligible local governing body. Do I have a mover? I've, I've got a question. Yep. Uh, through the chair to the director. Yep. Um, good day, Eric. How are you? Uh, I foreshadowed yesterday I was going to move that we are considered an eligible local governing body. Yep. Can you, is there something we're missing? That you're missing? Yeah, like it's, uh, in, in terms of the report, the, um, the advice, uh, the recommendation is to not be considered and I'm foreshadowing that I'm going to put a motion that we are considered, but I, I want to make sure we're not missing something. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, yeah, thank you for your, for your, uh, uh, for your question, Councillor, just through the chair. Just, uh, we're just following what, the, what I understood what the process was in the previous council. So uh, I'm not trying to preempt anything for council. I just want, uh, I'm just following the same process as last year. Uh, this process for me around uh, 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 a, a council or a board is a bit different for me, and it's a bit of a learning curve. Um, I sort of understand how we have to administer it, but the process in which you make a decision around that is a bit new, so I just followed what the previous one was. Uh, what your decision is is up to you. I'll just provide you with whatever information uh, we can provide. I've, I've asked Dee to attend as well, who might be able to provide a bit more information, uh, so we can give you as much of that uh, for you to make uh, your informed decision. So my, my reading of it is if we were to resolve today to become an eligible local governing body, there is no material difference to how we've been operating because we already um, apply a super scheme in terms of paying council super, or we have in the past, and that resolution's coming up. Um, uh, I, I can't see any other change other than that, uh, other than deducting income tax on a fortnightly basis and doing what it needs to do at back yeah. the house as you do with every it's other good, employee. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a very good point. Um, uh, in the commercial world, they would pay what they call a director fee, and as a director fee, uh, there, there are some implications around superannuation and also some workers' compensation and other other areas along those lines. Oh, not necessarily workers' compensation, but directors and officers' insurance in particular, which you would get covered under whether you do PAY uh, are They're ineligible. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, I find it a bit perplexing. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a normal thing for me where you decide to have PAYG deducted or not. It's uh, uh, it's entirely up to uh, to council to decide. Um, look, you, through the chair, um, I'd be suggesting that Dee talk to that. Um, council uh, council laws across Australia have a tax determination, which does actually outline the reasons why you get a choice. But Dee, I'll hand, handle that to you. Um, the reason why this is coming. Um, for a decision is because under the um, taxation law, councillors aren't considered um, employees. employees by common law. And but there's a provision in the Taxation Act to um, decide whether you want pay as you go taken out or not. So, um, so without um, the decision has to be uh, unanimous, everyone has to agree. So if, if it's not, then it doesn't go ahead. But basically it's because the councillors aren't considered employees under common law. But there is a um, provision in the Act, um, Taxation Act, to say that if council agrees at the start of their term to be under the tax um, pay as you go regime, then that's we can do that. And and just importantly, um, there is it from a councillor perspective, there are advantages and disadvantages either way. It depends on your complexity of your tax affairs in relation to that. If um, councillors do elect 
to pay as you go, and they you also get um, access to other benefits within the other other employees do. Um, superannuation was set, was sorted out um, many years ago, but you do get the ability to novate leases and and um, salary sacrifice and do some things in relation to that mm -hmm. as pay, no, PA. No, um, so, um, that's not available because they're not actually employees. Oh, because of the, the exemption, right? Okay, yeah. but um, yeah, apologies for that. But there's um, there are some specific tax benefits that they can do in relation um, to that. But because um, because your remuneration as a councillor is declarable to the tax office, it's um, you and without giving taxation advice, which yeah, I'm not allowed to give. We're not in a position. Yeah. To do that. Um, so so that's that's just something to consider as well. So. Yeah. So yes. you need to seek your own personal taxation advice. Yeah. So you can't. It, we couldn't salary sacrifice them, even though as an eligible governing uh, body. No, for it, you'd have to look at the super. It's only super. Only super. Yes. Okay. Because yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, You're talking. Not, yeah. The not other actually exemption. an employee yep. under common law. So the provisions for like innovative leasing and things like that and salary packaging. Salary uh, packaging that aren't super. available still. Yeah. Right. And the, does this decision have to be made today? It it normally is made on the on, uh, um, early on so that we know what to pay. What to pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got a pay cycle happening does, today. Does anybody right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll move the ladies on the table yep. to later in the day. Yes, so through the chair, is there any specific advice that would assist council that we can go and get for you that um, will help? I think it's just for individuals to yeah, mull over themselves. Yeah, I didn't get a chance that, to that, yeah. That's yeah. slight. Mm -hmm. Wasn't. But, Anybody yeah, else? We just, any uh, we, sorry, through the chair, just the comment I'd like to make is we just need to make sure that it's a unanimous decision. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, that's uh, how the, um, uh, the Act is actually stating it. We'll bring it back a bit later. Yeah, I'd move we lay it on the table. All those in favour? Until later in the, the meeting. meeting. Until later in the meeting. Nine zero. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Okay, right. Eleven point two, councillor su uh, superannuation. Just sorry on that. Just so we're clear, this this res yeah, sorry here you go. Just in the in the uh, advice in 50, just so it says, consequence of a resolving to be considered eligible local government body, elected members will be treated as employees of BROG withholding and a wide range of other taxation purposes. That's where it stops. What you're saying, there's no other benefit outside of taxation. Okay. Thank you. 11.2. Councillor superannuation. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council. One, take part in the superannuation scheme for its councillors. Two, pay contributions proportionate to contributions paid by council to the local government superannuation scheme for its standard permanent employees on behalf of each councillor. Got a seconder. Councillor Burkett, would you like to speak? Anybody like to speak? Two, four, no. All those in favour? Nine, zero. Eleven point three, council policy, best practice, example, standing orders for local government and standing com uh, committees. Do I have a mover, Councillor Hancock? Madam Mayor, I'd like to lay this on the table for a briefing. Okay. Um, the reason being is I think that, it, um, especially being a new council, that it's important that we have brief briefings before we look at policies, rather than trying to look at policy changes in briefings that we might not understand. Okay. Uh, sorry, look at policy changes in meetings. Um, I'd like to see a briefing on policy Can changes. I have a second? Do I need a second? I've moved to lay it on the table for a future meeting. Oh, okay. Um, all those in favour? Nine zero. Thirteen point one. Request for fee waiver. SRC Air Race. Air race, full stop. Do I have a mover? Yeah. Councillor Brompton. I move that Council 1 waive landing fees and overnight parking fees for 15 aircraft participating in the air race for the dates of the event between the 3rd and 5th of May 2024. And 2, write to Angel Flight confirming the donation and request that Council support be acknowledged as part of the promotional activity of the event. Have a seconder. Councillor Davis, would you like to speak? 
No, I think this. I think the report speaks for itself. Anybody have any questions that they would like to ask the manager? We're all good. All right. All those in favour? Eight zero. Fourteen point one Regional Arts Development Fund RADF Committee. Hello, Tanya. <laughs> um, um, Councillor Hancock has a question. Through the chair. Hello. <laughs> um, just wondering, do you have a copy of the previous resolution from the last term of council? I put in S one seventy A yesterday. Um, do you, Madam um, Madam Mayor? I haven't received any correspondence regarding that request. I'm sorry. Um, so I I was unaware that you you were chasing that information. So I, I do not have that okay. information. We can get that information if you need to. Sorry, yes. that email was sent last night. So. Um, do you want to lay it on the table? We lay it on the table to um, further in the day for yep. another. Um, later on the day? Yep. Yep. Later, yep. 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 So just to get a copy of the resolution? Yeah, we yep. just need a copy of the resolution to see um, what term, what we're after is to look at we, if we put, if there was a time period put in the last resolution yep. and then that'll make up a decision on... It might be later in the day, it might be later in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Later, later in the meeting. Anyway. Later in the meeting. Yep. It'll, it'll take me probably 10 minutes to yeah. find yep. the information. Yep. So yep. 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 Thank you. Well, if you want to just... Pop back in, we'll know you're right and yeah. we'll yep. come back to it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tanil. No problem. Okay, moving along here. 14.2. Oh, applications through Regional Arts Development Fund RADF Program 2023-24. So this is one that's already it's already gone through. Uh, Councillor Burkett. I'd like to move the Council One endorse uh, RADF Committee's grant assessment recommendations in supporting the following applications. A, remapping Mitchell Arts Collective for $5,628 as received in their application on the 4th of March 2024. B, Marino Artists Incorporated for 2,221 as received in their application on the 11th of March 2024. I have a seconder, Councillor Hancock. Would you like to speak, Councillor Burkett? No. Can I just ask a question of the officers so through the chair? Um, it's just that is this, um, Recommendation valid if we don't have, uh, if we still haven't made a decision around the committee? Yes, um, for you, Madam Mayor, it, it is. This was actually assessed before the election took right. place. So okay. the, the um, previous councillors were still elected members and were a part of that yeah. okay, assessment. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Hancock. Um, I'd like to speak. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to congratulate uh, the Mitchell Arts Collective um, groups and Mariner Artists Group. Um, for putting in the application. Um, I'd like to commend Officer Tenille, um for her hard work with the RADF committee. Um, it seems to be working really well, councillors. Um, pre previously, we used to only have two rounds of RADF open a year. This, um, last time a council changed that um, on the committee's recommendation to just have it open at all times. And that just allows community, when, when something comes up, that they can just apply for the grant uh, money at that time. And um, it just seems to be working really well. It's really good to see some, some of these applications coming through on a regular basis. Um, thank you for your hard work. Thank you. I'd like to speak to um, Neil. I don't think you were in the room at our last meeting when we wanted to congratulate you on the job you've done the last 12 months. Thank you um, so much. I really enjoyed it being on the committee, which I never thought I was ever going to enjoy. So um, it was really good. So, And the only reason, as Councillor Hancock said, we'd just like to see what the terms are for last time, just in case we can just carry that on for a little bit till we yep. go through some other stuff. So yep. that would be good. But thank you very much. You've done a marvellous job. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, what are we going to do? Are we going to vote? Anyone else like to speak? We're going to take to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Fourteen point three expressions of interest license for grazing on paddocks four to six Bank Street and fifty eight to sixty two Stevenson Street, Yule Bar, Queensland double four two seven. Do I have a mover? Councillor Burkett. Uh, I'd like to move the Council one enter into grazing agreement with Christie and Chris Beetson over lot four ten. Lot 411 on Y2211 and lot 1 on Y2237 
on the condition that the public liability insurance certificate of currency is obtained. Two, the properties are listed as is and no improvements will be made by council. Three, authorise a chief executive officer or delegate to execute the grazing agreement. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Brompton? Would anyone like to speak? Would you like to speak, Councillor Burkett? No. Any questions for the staff? All good? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Thank you. That's it. Okay, so before we go into close, do we have any conflicts of yes, interest? I do. Mm -hmm. I'd like to declare a conflict on C2, which is the recruitment for the Chief Executive Officer. The declaring councillor is myself, Councillor Cameron O'Neill. Given the, uh, the particulars, given the matters relates to the resignation of the CEO, I inform the meeting I'm aware that the CEO recently gave an independent assessor notice about my failure due to a pure oversight on my behalf to update my register of interest within the prescribed time period. The change in my notifiable interest occurred approximately 14 weeks ago. Upon recently realising my oversight, I immediately provided the CEO with the necessary form to update the register, at which time the CEO informed me that she was obliged by Section 15R2 of the Local Government Act 2009 to refer my oversight to the independent assessor. I agree with and fully support the CEO's actions in this regard. It's a declarable conflict of interest and I'll leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Thank you. Does someone like to move we go into close? Councillor O'Neill. I move we go in accordance with the provisions of section 254J3 of the Local Government Regulation 2012. The Council resolved to close the meeting to the public to discuss confidential items that its Council has considered as necessary to close the meeting. In accordance with section 254J5 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, the following table provides the matters to be discussed, an overview of what is to be discussed while the meeting is closed. Agenda item C1, sale of land for overdue rates and charges, public auction. C2, recruitment for Chief Executive Officer. Okay, I forget, uh, someone second that? Councillor Vincent, you don't have a conflict, no? You, no, you just, yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, all those in favour? Nine zero. John's on it. Was to me, it was five. It was 14.1. Thanks, yes. Phil. Okay. 14.1. Going back to 14.1. Regional Arts Development Fund RADF Committee. Do I have a mover? Uh, I'll move that uh, Council nominate uh, Mayor Taylor and um, Councillor Hancock. To sit on the RADF committee. Have a seconder, Councillor Vincent. Do you want to speak? No. Does anybody want to speak? I'd just like to say that we might be just doing that in the interim until we um, get some briefings on portfolios, portfolios, and whatever else. So, um, anybody against? For who's for? That's it. Sorry. Nine zero. <coughs> Thank you, Tanil. Thank, Thank you. What else did we have in this? Anything? Nothing uh, we can go back to yet. No. no. The, um, eleven point one. Mm. We're not ready for that yet, are we? No, no. no. no I think you need to. Yeah. You, you could just adjourn, adjourn. now. For yeah. yeah. Well, we'll adjourn for morning tea, and we'll be back at quarter two. Well, it won't arrive until ten thirty. Yeah, so but eleven. Oh, okay, Robin. Oh, sure. oh okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Yep. Half an hour. Yep. Yep. Quarter to eleven. Yep. Thank you. Meeting at ten forty-nine. And does someone like to move? We go into closed. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move that uh, the meeting go into closed. A seconder. Councillor Hancock. All those in favour? Nine zero. Right. All. C two recruitment of the chief. to 11.1.
elected members, PAYG slash eligible local governing body. Do I have a mover? Councillor O'Neill. So I'm happy to move, but if the, um, given the information we've got in front of us, it, the CEO, can you just explain the info that's been shared? Yes, certainly. Um, sorry for the brevity of the information, but look, certainly as we've discussed, the council has an option not to be considered as an eligible local governing body under the Tax Administration Act. Um, what that means is that no pay-as-you-go um, tax is deducted. You are still able to take a car in relation to that. There are no financial uh, fringe benefit tax um, implications on the council. Um, and yes, you're still accessing your superannuation and there's no ability to have any other further um, reductions, if you will, um, of uh, your councillor payment. If you do choose to go down the PAYG route, um, yes, the PAYG is deducted, so it's never taxed um, at whatever the marginal rate of tax is. Um, you're still able to get a car. Um, the difference with that is that we do pay fringe benefit tax on that car, and there's formulas in relation to that. Um, you get access to your superannuation as you would in, in either case. Then, and we're just checking out. We do believe that there probably is the ability to take other tax concessions um, out of that arrangement although you're not recognised as employees, and we'll just finalise that and send that out. And, and so that's um, uh, salary sacrificing X, Y, Z? Um, you, you are able to salary sacrifice. Okay. It's, the, it's other options such as novation no of leases yeah. or other tax um, reduction schemes. Okay. I'm happy okay. to move. Yep. I'll move the council be considered as an eligible local governing body under the Tax Administration Act 1953 for taxation purposes, and to note that this that's it, sorry, just number one. Yeah. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Brompton, anyone like to speak? I I'm happy to speak. Uh, this is a decision that's made at the beginning of each term. Uh, the uh, information that's been provided is that uh, there is no uh, uh, negative or positive uh, impact to uh, the way Council manages the uh, payments uh, made, remuneration payments made to uh, uh, councillors uh, and, and therefore um, on, on this basis um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to move that we are considered as an eligible local governing body for this term of council. Anybody else like to speak for or against? I think, um, yes. I think based on the fact that other councils, are not, are numerous other councils are doing this, we're not leading the way or anything else, we're following on what other councils are doing so I'm supportive of this. Anybody else like to speak? We go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. We're on to C one. Sale of land for overdue rates and charges, public auction. So we're going to lay it on the table. Can I just ask a question? There was oh, yeah, great thing. there were things to come back. We are now we're deferring the decision until the twenty fourth. Yep. I'll move that we defer the decision of uh, C1 sale of land for overdue rates and charges public auction until the um, ordinary meeting scheduled for the 24th of April. To have a briefing before then? Via a briefing. Yeah. Seconder? Councillor Seawright? Anyone like to speak? Going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Uh, eight. All against? One. Eight one if I can call for a division. Brendan C. Wright. Sorry. We're on to C two. Councillor O'Neill. I have a conflict. I declared earlier. Councillor O'Neill has left the room. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hancock. I move that Council 1 acknowledge and accept the CEO's resignation with effect from 17th of July 2024. 2. Thank the CEO for her service. 3. Not require the CEO to serve out the remaining period of her notice, but rather be paid in lieu for the balance of the period of her notice. That is, the period commencing Monday the 15th of April 2024 and concluding Wednesday the 17th of July 2024 inclusive. And four, pursuant to section 195 of the Local Government Act 2009, appoint Cameron Hoffman as its acting CEO with this appointment to take effect 
from the close of business on Friday the 12th of April 2024. Five, commence planning for the recruitment process in accordance with S1, sorry, S194 of the Local Government Act 2009 and bring processes and options to a future briefing. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Davis, would the mover like to speak? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm supporting this resolution and the acceptance of the CEO's resignation. I believe this is the best outcome for both the CEO and the organisation. I support the um, appointment of Cameron Hoffman as the acting CEO, CEO, as I believe he has the ability and the corporate knowledge to be able to lead the council for this for this interim acting CEO position. Um, I'd like to thank the CEO for her service as um, stated in the resolution and wish her all the best for the future. Thank you. Anyone to, like to speak against? Uh, I will, Miss, Miss, Mrs Mayor, sorry. <laughs> Councillor get my head around that. Um, I, I won't be supporting this in its entirety. I, I do totally get the decision and I, I know the CEO is in, in agreement with this decision moving forward. Um, and I also have all the faith in the world in Cameron Hoffman. I think it's a, uh, a great fit for, Cam, uh, for the organisation having someone with Cameron's elf. But I would love to have seen the CEO go till the end of July. Um, I've, I've enjoyed having the CEO as our boss. Or, our leader. Um, I'd just like to thank her for her service, her professionalism and integrity and wish you all the best for the future, Edwina. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for? Amber. Thank you. Sorry. I just believe this is a business decision. The CEO has tendered her resignation. Um, I believe Cameron will be a great fit as well, having worked with him um, whilst being employed by council. And I wish you all the well in the future. Thank you. Against? Uh, Councillor Sirai? Uh, well, I actually I speak for um, in support of the resolution, but not in its entirety. Um, while I support the um, appointment of Cameron Hoffman as acting um, CEO in the interim, I believe he has capability of fulfilling those duties. Um, I just would have liked um, to have seen and had the faith that um, our current CEO would have filled, fulfilled her duties until her um, finishing day of July 17th. Anyone else like to speak? I'd like to speak. I'd like to also say thank you to the CEO. Um, as Councillor Hancock said, um, you have tended your resignation and I just believe that... Um, thank you, is really all I want to say. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, it's been a journey and um, we've got all new faces and we're probably all fresh ideas and other ways. And so just really like to thank you for the time um, and wish you all the best in the future. Thank you very much, Ms. Madam Mayor. Look, I certainly would like to echo those comments. I've um, really loved um, working for you or working for the council, um, the past council and this council um, over the last, um, you know, nearly two and a half years, which is amazing how quickly time has flown. Um, I've loved that. Um, I love our business. I love working in local government and it's been a very pleasurable um, journey for me. Um, I've loved the challenges and embraced those and um, I thank the council for their trust and um, in me over that time and um, really look for you know really look forward to taking probably a really positive impression of Narana Regional Council as I go forward into other work. So again, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, and the only thing I would suggest, sorry, I got to talk, is in relation to your appointment of your acting CEO, do you want to put a timeline to that? Um, it can be a point take effect right but it can be um, until further note, notice and that gives you a bit of a time frame in relation to um, an acting CEO position. As the council you're entitled to have someone in the acting position for up to a period of 12 months, just short of 12 months. So um, for completeness you might want to put a specific time frame or you might want to put until further notice because obviously at um, some point in the next 12 months, you'll go to um, a permanent recruitment process. Uh, my only question for that um, is with the, as it is, um, it's an acting position. So, you know, if we go down recruitment and we just, we then, you know, when we, when we appoint a CEO, wouldn't that, wouldn't that resolution supersede this resolution? Yeah, look, that's a good point. Um, look, just for the clarity in the room, is uh, my appointments till the 17th of July. And essentially what you're doing is you're bringing forward that, but during, between uh, whatever day, um, that is Friday, um, and the balance 
of, say, 17th of July, you will have an acting CEO. Um, after that, you have the option to either put in an interim or a permanent CEO, and you'll just enact different parts of the Act, whichever way you go. Um, it, um, so do you need to put, um, to take effect from the close of business on Friday the 12th of April until, is it the 17th of July? Is that no. what you're thinking? Mm. No, that's not my intention. My intention is until we appoint a CEO. Okay. Yeah, but what if they go after? Um, so so, so, uh, so until, fur until further notice? Is uh, that what sorry. you're saying? So there's two that's different parts of the Act. Is essentially, it's all still Section 195, just for completeness, is you cannot have an interim CEO until the 17th of July, right? And that's right, when that resignation mm -hmm. takes effect. So they can only be an acting CEO from whatever day, uh, 12th of April, mm -hmm. through to the 17th of July. And after that time, it's either a permanent or an interim. Um, so what an acting CEO would be from the 12th of April through to the 17th of July. And then after that, council can make whatever decision it wishes to whether you're taking an interim position or a permanent position. Does the, that make sense? It does yeah. make sense. Oh. It does make sense. Um, my question is, so you can't have an acting CEO ever? So an acting CEO... I, mean, I, get, I get between... I get between... Yeah. The, so the an acting, acting CEO, CEO is in lieu of a yeah. CEO... But as a matter of fact, actually, I think I'm going to leave it as is because, um, Madam CEO, it's not from the 17th of July. It, not, it, it, um, will be no, it will be no longer, we will no longer have a CEO as at 5pm on Friday. Uh, so that is in an acting you position. No, you're paying notice, it. The notice still stands legally. So essentially, an acting CEO is not an interim CEO. It is an acting CEO because you have a live contract at foot that finishes on a certain date and that certain date is the 17th of July, regardless of whether you pay yep, in lieu yep. or not, whether I'm in the building or not. Um, so simply put, uh, for completeness, that's when the, the title acting finishes. That acting person can become your interim CEO. We just need another um, resolution. Yes, you'll need another resolution. Mm. So um, so until further notice, and you can sort that out. Uh, so until further notice, notice yeah. we'll cover? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fine then. Yeah, no drama. So it's, it's yeah. similar to if I left as a town foreman and I run out all my long service and they don't fill that position until that date I've done all my long service. And the actual all of that. incumbent position yeah. is yeah. filled up. Even though I'm so, gone. Yeah. So that's just, just to be clarified, that's not the legal advice um, we've received. Well, so I just, well, I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's, yeah. that's quite nice and mm. broad, but mm. double check that by all means. Yeah. But actually that's exactly what happened to, to me. I was acting then interim then then permanent. Yeah. So yeah. That's right. That's just yeah. Okay. Anybody else like to speak? Okay, we're gonna go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? What's that? Seven one. Yes. Seven one? Yes. Okay. Oh, we're gonna get counts on here, we <coughs> That's the end of our agenda today. Has anybody got anything else? We've got nothing laid on the table, Cal. Um, We're all good. Can I, if I do, and this is with notice to be, can I just ask a question because I might have a motion without notice. Last term, towards the end of the last term, did we put a motion in support of the uh, moves against the reinjection into the Great Artesian Basin? <laughs> Um, oh. No, through the chair, you didn't, you, the rock did, but this council didn't take a position to say. But you certainly had put feedback into the rock, and the general discussion was there was an, they, the rock made um, a resolution, I'm not exactly what, sure what that is, I'll find that for you. Yeah. Um, but I don't think you've, as a council, taken a position in relation to that. Wendy, could you just adjourn the meeting for a sec? Yeah, could I just, yeah, I'll adjourn. Yep. 408. Councillor O'Neill. Uh, Ms. Hull, I've got a uh, motion without notice. Yep. And that motion is um, uh, reads that uh, Council 1 acknowledged uh, its motion put forward at the previous um, ALGA meeting to support LGAQ, Queensland Farmers Federation, and South West Rocks position and advocacy in calling on the state government to reject the current Glencore EIS application 
for a carbon capture storage project in the Great Artesian Basin. Three, authorise the Mayor to make representations on behalf of Maranoa Regional Council and the residents of our region who rely so heavily on the Great Artesian Basin. Hello, I'm seconder. Councillor Seawright, who would like to speak? I will. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor. Um, there is uh, no greater asset uh, for us, um, a natural asset, than the Great Artesian Basin. All of our communities rely uh, on um, uh, the water that we draw uh, from the GAB, uh, and we need to advocate as strongly as we can to protect it, um, not just uh, for uh, communities, but for business as well. Um, uh, you know, our agricultural enterprises across our region to rely so heavily on um, the GAB, uh, and I think we need to put our weight behind organisations like uh, LJQ, our advocacy group, the Queensland Farmers Federation, and of course our own Southwest Regional Organisation of Council and the work that they're doing in lobbying the state government to um, take a stand and to reject this application as quickly as they can, um, to give confidence back to uh, communities like ours that um, this important asset will be protected at all costs. Anybody else like to speak? Uh, Councillor Pinson? I just, um, look, I agree with this one too, and I thank Cameron, uh, Councillor O'Neill for bringing it to the table um, this afternoon, and it is an important asset that I think um, being such so highly reliant on agriculture and our um, rural towns have no other option for their um, drinking water. So I think this um, is a really great resolution this afternoon. Anybody else like to speak? We go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Anybody have any further business? Well, we'll close the meeting at 4.11. Thank you very much.